Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review of two different Lucas Aquarelle paints. I've got the studio version, which is much cheaper, and the um, 1862 version, which is much more expensive. So the first, um, the first difference is the palette that they come in. These are both the travel sets. Um, this is a nice tin. Palette. Um, it's really nice. It's got a little finger hole in the bottom, so if you're out, um, you're out painting, you can kind of hold it with your face. You know, these are the loops always seem way too big for my hand, so I just kind of hold it like that, and I could put like a postcard up here and use this as the mixing area. And la di da, there I go, painty painty. Um, the studio version, or the which basically means kind of like um like a student grade, um, has a plastic palette, very similar to the Cotman set by Winsor Newton, and um, has a little mixing area in there and even a small area for a collapsible, collapsible brush. Uh, mine did not come with a collapsible brush, but there is space for one right there. Um, probably a little too skinny for a water brush, so you would need to either store that separately or bring a, a bucket of water. And I had, was just using these, so these are wet, so I'm going to go ahead and spray these just so when we get to the point where we're demoing them, um, we've kind of got apples to apples. The thing I did notice about these is that they do reconstitute beautifully. So the other big difference is when I opened up this palette, it was ready to go. These little pans were in here, uh, standard half pan, ready to fly. These were all wrapped with um, with foil and, you know, their little packaging. So so I had to unwrap all these before I began to paint. Um, the neat thing is they use the exact same colors in both kits, whether you're getting the professional or the student grade. So, um, so say you you decide to start off with the student grade, save some money because this retails for um, twenty three oh five, but you can find them on sale at like Jerry's for twelve. This retails for eighty seven fifty, but you can find it at Jerry's for um, forty two dollars. So there's definitely you know you don't have to pay sticker price for this. Um, it's probably going to be a lot more on Amazon if you you know go looking around. So you might even be worth it even if you don't get to free, free shipping and you need to. Um, pay shipping cheap, cheaper over there, but, um, but you know, shop wherever you want. Um, so that was the other thing, you do have to unwrap each of those. But the neat thing is, since they are the same colors here, say you use up your magenta and um, maybe your cyan and your yellow ochre, you can always buy the half pans in the more professional line and replace them. And I think the pan, um, each pan, well, it would probably series one, but I saw pans as low as three forty nine over at Jerry's for the professional one, and I think I think they sold the, I don't know if you can get the individual pans of the student ones or if you have to buy it in tubes and refill it that way. But either way, um, I, I think they're both, they're both quite affordable paints as far as watercolors go. So the first thing I want to test, and actually the main thing I want to test is how they look on paper and also how opaque they are. So I've got some little strips of uh, black cardstock here and I'm just going to go ahead and start swatching them out and this will be riveting video footage I am sure but uh, but it'll work I'm just using some cheap paper too whenever I'm doing like um people will say oh swatch it out in the paper that you're going to use for your painting I'm like you know what I'm not wasting you know seven dollar sheet arches paper to do a paint swatch sorry <laughs> it's not gonna happen I'm gonna swatch it on the cheapest stuff that I have so why don't I actually want to pause it while I just get my swatch ready and then we'll be back to swatch together okay I've made my little color chart and I have my artist um, 1862 aquarels here and my student grade here and we're gonna look at them side by side so the first one we're gonna look at is lemon yellow and we're gonna go in with the artists uh, grade first looks nice and we're gonna go over the black and we can see it's pretty transparent clean off my brush we're gonna go into the um, the studio version pretty similar it's a little bit more opaque not bad though I mean they look very very similar to me we'll see when it dries if there's a big difference if there's a big shift or not in the color um, the next up would be the cad yellow and again we're in here with the um, artist grade first a little bit opaque cadmiums tend to be kind of opaque anyway and we're going to go in yeah look now that that's kind of dried and sinked in you don't see any of the um, of the lemon there uh, so we'll go in with the studio version. The color is a little bit cooler, it seems, than the artist version. Um, it's still pretty, it's still pretty close. Actually, it's not as opaque as the artist one. I'm kind of surprised there. It could be because they use a synthetic hue on the student ones, and they're using real cadmium on the artist ones. Um, 
you know that could be that's a one thing that they do to bring down the price for a student set is to use a hue rather than a true pigment now the yellow ochre of the artists oh that's pretty one of my favorite colors it's got a little bit of opacity but again it's a it's a sedimentary um, iron color does it is tends to be one of the more opaque colors so let's try our student version which I reckon these will be very similar because yellow ochre the pigment that they use for that it's a fairly affordable pigment so um, they usually use the real deal in the student grade stuff very nice those are very similar I'm not sure how much you can tell um, on the video or not but that's very similar I feel like the artist grade one might be a little bit warmer and a little more granulating um, it could be due to a little more filler in the student one but um, but really not bad all right now we're gonna go in with the English red we'll start in with the artist version I'm also trying out a new brush too this is by fab brush Ooh, that's a real rich color that's also fairly opaque and we'll go in with the student version which again I believe is an iron iron based color so they might have the exact same pigment gosh those two are very similar so far so far you know they're all holding up really really well um, let's try the cad red again starting first with the artists version oh isn't that a pretty color stunning love that now let's go in with the student one which does look to be a little bit cooler in temperature yep there's a big difference there again probably due to a hue versus a pigment I should have saved my little wrappers well you can find uh, you can find the information too online on what's in the kits and what the pigments are they're kind of flowing together a little bit but the uh, the cad red in the um, student version looks more like a cad red deep whereas the cad red in the artist version looks like a more true cad red like a medium tone or even a cad red light it's a very kind of orange based red um, whereas the one in the student one is a little more neutral but it is still warmer than than real neutral uh, my favorite magenta starting off with the artists oh isn't that stunning that looks like one of those colors it wouldn't be very light fast doesn't it <laughs> because it's so vivid oh I love that love that love that well, let's try the student version which also seems to be delightful Ooh, that looks good too doesn't seem to be as pigmented it uh seems a little bit less intense let's put a little bit more on there and see might just have been, been how much I put on there very similar though I mean very similar okay let's go into the second row and I arranged both of the palettes the same just so that I would have um, easier time comparing them we're gonna start with the cyan Thalo cyan blue whoops I had a little drop of magenta on there <laughs> oh that's a stunning color very transparent lovely we're gonna do some color mixing in a moment and see how these colors mix oh sorry about the glare guys gosh that was kind of glary there you can see it a little better now and now we'll try the um the cyan from the student the student kit gosh that's almost an exact match really you know I'm here with it having a hard time telling the difference between those two colors very very similar match okay and then we're gonna go with ultramarine and again I'm in the um, artist set first Ooh, that's nice it's a pretty color you can see the granulation already happening from the pigment love that I love uh, I love to see the granulation so we'll see if we get that granulation in the student grade we might not if they have to use a synthetic uh, hue for that we'll see less yeah way less granulation the color is different um, the color in this actually feels a little warmer more purpley and that color and that's a little bit cooler um, still though and it's a little bit more opaque I don't know if you can see that or not but I, I and it's very minuscule I'm not saying it's it's a bad at all but I can see some of the blue on top of the um, the black but I'm still getting some granulation there which is nice it's different than what we have there um, honestly that color is what I think of more when I think of ultramarine blue than that color to be absolutely honest in fact I kind of want to find the wrapper for the, I'm gonna see if I've got the wrapper right in here excuse my yep it says ultramarine so I was just thinking maybe I got the wrong maybe they weren't all exact the same yep that yep that's ultramarine right there so okay it just to me when I think ultramarine I think more of that color but that's just a personal personal thing there 
I'm I, I'm very impressed with the student grade of this paint, I have got to say. Um, all right, we're going to go to the phthalo green, also called Viridian. It's called both. And the thing that on the on the, the uh, studio box, they actually put a um, like, couple names for it because this name can also be called Viridian. It can also be no, uh, known as Thalo Green. So just to kind of, it does do a good job of properly representing what is in the box, which I like. Sometimes you get so many paints nowadays since watercolor is such a trend and they just kind of like make up cutesy names for the colors instead of saying what they really are because a lot of these companies coming up with the you know cutesy um new watercolor sets people might use up the paint and actually want to get that paint again and they're not going to know what you know pecan pie brown is you know they need to know that it's raw umber or whatever so um so i like that they do that okay so now we're going to look at the studio version of that Whoa, those are quite different. I'm almost finding, and it might be because I sprayed the studio one earlier. Let me give that a spray and just see what happens. Um, that I'm getting more color out of those pans because I was just using them, but it's nice though. A lot of times with the studio with the studio versions of things, they're really hard and they don't want to release the color very well, but I did not find that, that to be the case. Let's add a little bit more on there and see if it's a little bit more similar. I would say those two colors are fairly different. This one, to me, I actually prefer the studio version than these two. Um, let me show you that a little closer here. I really like that green. I'm not a big fan of mixed greens rather than sap, but I like the granulation in there, and that's usually not what you see in a Viridian. I think it's a pretty color. I feel like I need to spread this out a little bit. Gosh, I don't know. That's funny. I like the studio one better on that one. Wouldn't it be funny if it's all like artist grade paint, just different prices? <laughs> Not so funny if you just paid big bucks for the big one, I guess. Let's try the um, chromium green, which is not one of my favorite colors. I have to tell you that. I prefer sap green. Very, It's a very opaque color. It's just not my cup of tea. What can I say? Just not my cup of tea. It's more of a gouache, I feel. I always feel that. I, I remember buying that by mistake thinking I was, it was going to be like sap green, and I was so disappointed. So since then, I've had a chip on my shoulder and I've carried a grudge against chromium green. And let's go in with this. Very similar. Yeah, very similar. Um, that actually seems to cover, it seems to be more opaque. Now, generally, and the reason I put the black uh, strip of paper down is because generally with watercolor, you don't want opacity. You want transparency. Although if you prefer opacity, that's totally fine. It's your personal preference, but generally it's a mark of a good watercolor is how transparent it is. Um, and this raw umber, this is lovely. Granulates nice. It's kind of like a burnt, I guess I was thinking raw sienna being more yellow ochery, but this is a raw umber. Very much like burnt umber, pretty color. Nice, uh, nice texture in that. And that's why you want some of these granulating colors because they can give you texture like if you're painting like wood or dirt and things like that. Uh, so we'll go here onto the student version. Nice as well. This is more yellow undertones than the uh, than the than the uh, raw umber here. This raw umber I feel like is a little more neutral. This one I feel like has got a little bit more of a yellow undertone to it. And again, I'll hold it up close, but not it's not that significant. It's just, you know, just a little bit of a difference. And let's try, last but not least, our Payne's Gray. And as far as grays go, Payne's Gray is a nice gray. I usually don't use gray. But um, and the thing I do love about these kits is they don't contain a white or a black, which I always feel is like a waste of money when I see black or... or uh... Ooh, that's pretty. Oh my gosh, got some nice granulation there. I always feel like it's a waste of money. Don't put black and white in my set. I don't want to pay for black and white. You know, that's, I've got so many tubes of black and white because they come with some sets and I'm never going to use what I have. So stop forcing me to buy more black and white. Okay. Oh, this is, this, both of these are pretty. Now I do notice a difference in the granulation a little bit. Maybe it's just because that's been on the paper longer, but let's bring that up. Really stunning uh, granulation in the, in the artist version. And the granulation in the student version is nice too. So, you know, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with either of these. Honestly, I am surprised at how well the student version holds up to the um, to the artist version. Personally, I prefer more transparent colors. However, when you're looking at English red, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, these are colors that tend to be a little bit more uh, semi-transparent or opaque anyway. So I can't really fault them for that. The cyan and magenta are absolutely crystal clear. So, um, 
you know, if you're going to get a set, that's what you're going to get in these sets. Those are the colors you're going to get. Um, it's a nice sampler, nice travel kit. I would put this, I would put these, actually, I would put the quality on these a step up above the Cotman's. And usually, like, what I recommend for a beginner is the very similar Cotman set that's in this set. The Cotman set's more transparent, I will tell you that, but I don't think the pigment strength is as good with the Cotman set. Either way, you're not, you're going to be fine either way, but this one's also less money. I think the Cotman set retails for 30 and sometimes you find it on sale for 20 and this retails for 24 but I saw it on sale at Jerry's for 12 so you know significant savings and if you're doing a class the thing I really want to try this out because um, if I'm doing a class and I need to bring supplies that can add up really quick and if I can bring these for the students then I can save a lot of money and be able to you know give them more than I would be able to instead of giving them a squirt of paint for my tube I could give them an actual set which that's something that I like so now what I want to do is do some primary mixing and I'm going to go with lemon um actually no no I'm going to go with cad yellow magenta and cyan so let's try that here with the artists first actually you know I'm going to put a little bit of that on the other end too so I can so I can kind of bring the spectrum around a little magenta here And let's see how they mix together. Whoo! I'm gonna need to add some more yellow there, but that makes a nice orange. Let's put a little bit more magenta down. Grab a little blue, see what happens there. Let's go with the uh, cyan blue, because it's more of a true primary. And some really pretty purples. Another thing with magenta and cyan is um, you'll want to check your light fastness rating on those because these super transparent colors tend to be more fugitive, meaning they tend to be colors that would fade. So make sure that if you are going to do that um, and use it in some artwork that you want to stand the test of time that you have you made sure that they're light fast. Um, oh, those two colors are great together, but if I, tra if I go over to the purple, I'm going to end up with a mess there. I'm going to do a little bit more blue on the end just so I can have that there. Very nice, very transparent, clear mixing. Now let's go over to the student version and see if that's the same. Start in with, let's go our, let's put our cadmium on both ends again. Let's go in with our magenta, see how that looks. I feel like it's a little bit weaker maybe. Maybe not. I'm getting pretty darn close here. Color-wise, a little more magenta down. Oh yeah, maybe I just didn't have it wet enough. Because we're getting some nice rich colors there. Let's do a little bit of cyan here. Let's try, let's get enough down before I start mixing here. And again, we're getting nice vivid purple. I don't feel like it's quite as rich as the purple I got above, but it's not bad. And let's mix it here with its neighbor. Get a nice green there. I'm wondering if these might be more dye based and those might be more pigments because I'm getting some really cool granulation in there. And it could be that just this hasn't sat long enough to granulate. But um but you know what? For the money, <laughs> for the money, the studio one kind of gets my gets my pick. Um, I think the, but honestly, the artist quality one, as far as, as far as paint goes, is very affordable too, compared to other artist quality paints. So let's go and look here now that our, everything's dry on the black paper for the most part, so we can kind of see what's the, both the lemons were equal in opacity. Um, I think the studio cadmium had a little bit more of a chalky hue, whereas the um, artist cadmium, the yellow that I'm seeing, I believe is a pigment and not filler. And I feel like I'm seeing more of the filler here on the studio one. Yellow ochre, pretty much the same. Um, English red, gosh, those two were pretty much the same. Um, 
cadmium red. I found the cad red in the 1862 set to be more of a true cadmium, whereas the one in the studio set feels more like a cad red deep. Magentas look the same, cyans look the same. Ultramarines were a little bit different, but they both granulated, both beautiful. And um, as you can see across, they're all pretty, pretty similar. So I hope that helped you. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like these review videos, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!